This video has been produced to help you and your team visualize an actual rodeo event and is a companion piece to the Bus Rodeo Toolkit. In this video, you'll learn what happens during the day of the rodeo, the types of skills the contestants will be tested on, the typical rodeo course obstacles, and how to judge the course obstacles. Documents showing the configuration of obstacles and templates for scoring are included in the module. We recommend that you look at the documents before viewing this video. To help you visualize the events involved in a successful rodeo, we filmed the Connecticut Rodeo, and we appreciate their willingness to help us create this presentation. At this point, your team has completed a number of tasks to make this event successful, as explained in the Bus Rodeo Toolkit. We will now show you what should happen the day of the event and explain certain elements of a bus rodeo. First off, don't forget, this is a fun event. Your drivers get to compete and, if successful, win an award and the opportunity to participate in a national competition. Rodeos are great for team building and to build morale for your drivers and staff, as well as to enable drivers to show their skills and network with other people working within the transit industry. Before we discuss the setup and operation of the course and event, let's talk about the people. Who attends? Judges. You should have at least one person with judging experience at each location. A second judge is also present and can be instructed by the experienced judge. In many cases, a staff person or rodeo organizer will walk through the course with the judges to give instructions on each obstacle. You can either have this person walk all the judges through each obstacle or have the staff person work one-on-one -on -one with the people who are judging the obstacle. Working one-on-one -on -one seems to work best since it is less confusing and focuses on one aspect of the course. A rodeo is a busy environment and you want to make sure that there is consistency with the way an obstacle is judged for each participant. In addition to the judges on the course, there is a judge in the vehicle with the contestant. The judges are typically given a judge packet with a diagram of the course and scoring sheets before the walkthrough so that they are prepared to ask questions during the walkthrough. Once the scoring sheets are completed by the judges, they are typically collected by volunteers via a golf cart or carts who verify signatures and deliver the forms to staff who are compiling the contestant scores. Volunteers. There's plenty to do during the rodeo and it's a good idea to have a group of people to help out. You'll need people to help set up and break down, register drivers, judges, and volunteers, collect scoring sheets, make sure the social aspect of the event happens without a hitch, and just in case a judge does not show up, you have a substitute. Drivers. What's a rodeo without contestants? You have to market the event to transit agencies to get drivers to register for the rodeo. Registration can be accomplished online. Rodeo organizers should have all contestants registered in advance of the event so that a day of schedule or brochure can be created. And rodeo staff can check the drivers in on the day of the event. In some cases, the driver may get a memento, such as a shirt or hat, to commemorate participation in the rodeo. Who else attends? If it's a family event, you'll want to have some entertainment, such as a DJ or clown. You should have an announcer to corral the drivers in preparation for their run. People are going to want food. This may include breakfast and lunch. You will need some time between the end of the competition and the announcement of the winners, so having entertainment or lunch can be used to keep people busy while scoring is completed. Okay, now we've covered the people, let's talk about the course and judging and scoring the obstacles. The first obstacle in Connecticut was the serpentine. Once again, the sequence of the obstacles will depend on the size and the shape of the area where you're holding the rodeo. The serpentine obstacle tests the contestant's ability to maneuver turns. When setting up the obstacle, Place the traffic cones in their locations and then spray paint a circle around the outside of each traffic cone so that they can be placed in the same spot if a contestant hits and moves the cone. 
As shown in this diagram, there's a lane or a gate coming toward the pivot cone and a lane or gate leaving from the pivot cone. The contestant has to maneuver to the right of the pivot cone and then out of the exit lane. You will need two judges for this obstacle, one on each side. The judges note whether the contestant hits any of the cones. The contestant may also have to stop and shift into reverse. The judge must remember to check to see if any of the cones are hit while the vehicle is traveling in reverse. The number of times the contestant shifts into reverse must be recorded as well. The contestant can achieve 50 possible points with this obstacle. If the contestant touches the pivot cone, 25 points are deducted. 10 points are deducted each time the contestant hits other cones, and 10 points are deducted for each time the contestant shifts into reverse. If the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, 50 points are deducted from the contestant's score. Make sure you put the contestant's name and vehicle number on the scorecard. As with all obstacles, final scores cannot be less than zero. The next obstacle is called the offset street. This is a test of the contestant's ability to drive through two separate narrow lanes that are offset one full lane. Cones are used to designate the two narrow lanes. Make sure you mark around the outside edge of each cone so the judge can place it back in the correct location in case it gets hit. Two judges are required for this obstacle with each judge located on either side of the vehicle. As with the serpentine, judges record the number of cones the contestant touches and the number of times the contestant shifts into reverse. The contestant can achieve 50 possible points with this obstacle. 10 points are deducted for each cone that is hit, and 10 points are deducted for each shifting in reverse. If the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, 50 points are deducted from the contestant's score. We now come to the right turn obstacle. This is a test of the contestant's ability to maneuver a 90 degree right turn. The corner is designated with cones as well as a pivot cone. As part of the obstacle, the right tire of the vehicle must pass within six inches of the pivot cone. To measure this, a line is marked out 45 degrees from the pivot cone and divided into six inch segments. In judging this obstacle, the judge on the right side of the vehicle must record the vehicle hitting cones on the right side and which segment the right tire passes over. The other judge observes the cones on the left side. The contestant can achieve 50 possible points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches the pivot cone, 25 points are deducted. 10 points are deducted for each cone that is hit and 10 points each for shifting in reverse. 5 points are deducted for each 6 inch segment beyond the first 6 inch segment. If the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, the contestant is deducted 50 points. The next obstacle is the right hand reverse. This is a test of the contestant's ability to simulate a bus backing up between two objects. Cones are positioned to designate a through lane and a lane. Let's call it the alley that the vehicle will be backed into. There is a pivot cone at the front of the alley on the passenger side and a rear cone at the end of the alley. Once again, it's advised to spray paint along the outer edge of each cone so that you can place the cone in the correct position in the event it is moved during the competition. The judge on the passenger side of the vehicle will note which cones are touched from the passenger side view and measures the distance between the rear cone and the closest point to the bus when the bus is more than 36 inches from the rear cone. The judge on the other side of the through lane observes the left front of the vehicle when entering the obstacle and the left rear while the vehicle is backing into the alley. Once the vehicle is stopped, the contestant must take the vehicle out of gear before the measurement is taken. Once the measurement is taken, the judge taps on the vehicle to let the contestant know the measurement has been taken. The contestant can achieve 50 points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches the rear cone, the contestant loses 25 points. The contestant loses 10 points if the vehicle touches the pivot cone. 5 points each for all other cones that are touched. 10 points each if the vehicle is shifted into reverse after the initial shift into reverse. 
and five points for each 12-inch segment beyond the 36-inch limit from the rear cone. This is the right rear tire clearance obstacle. It tests the contestant's ability to drive through a lane with the right front and rear dual tires. Five tennis balls marked A through E are used on each side to designate the lane. To keep the balls in place, a small rubber ring is placed underneath the tennis ball. The balls are set up so that the width of the lane diminishes as the vehicle reaches the end of the lane. There is a judge on either side of the lane. In the case of Connecticut, yoga mats were provided so that the judges could be more comfortable when observing the front and rear right tires. The judges are looking to determine if the tires touch any of the balls. The contestant can achieve 50 points on this obstacle. The deductions and points will depend on which balls are touched according to the following. A balls, 20 points per ball. B balls, 16 points per ball. C balls, 8 points per ball. D balls, 4 points per ball. And E balls, 2 points per ball. The next obstacle is the passenger stop. It tests the contestant's ability to make a passenger stop at a bus stop. The obstacle is a simulated bus stop with barrels at the entrance and exit of the obstacle to simulate parked cars and a curb of some material, such as a number of 6 by 6 by 12 pieces of lumber. In order to stop properly, the front tires of the vehicle must be 6 inches or less from the curb, and the rear tires must be 15 inches or less from the curb. Once the contestant comes to a complete stop, he or she must open the door. The judges are situated at the front right side and the rear right side of the stop. Once the contestant comes to a complete stop and opens the door, the main judge measures the distance from the curb to the center of the front and rear tires. The contestant can score 50 points on this obstacle. If he or she touches an entrance or exit cone, 25 points are deducted for each cone. If the curb is touched, 25 points are deducted. One point is deducted for every inch the front tire is beyond 6 inches and for every inch the rear tire is beyond 15 inches. All distances are rounded up to the next inch. Each time the contestant shifts into reverse, 10 points are deducted, and if the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, 25 points are deducted. The next obstacle is a left-hand reverse, which is similar to the right-hand reverse. This is a test of the contestant's ability to simulate a bus backing up between two objects. Cones are positioned to designate a through lane and a lane or alley that the vehicle will be backed into. There is a pivot cone at the front of the alley on the driver's side and a rear cone at the end of the alley. Once again, it's advised to spray paint along the outer edge of each cone so that you can place the cone in the correct position in the event it is moved during the competition. The judge on the driver's side of the vehicle will note which cones are touched from the driver's side view and measures the distance between the rear cone and the closest point to the bus when the bus is more than 36 inches from the rear cone. The judge on the other side of the through lane observes the right front of the vehicle when entering the obstacle and the right rear while the vehicle is backing into the alley. Once the vehicle is stopped, the contestant must take the vehicle out of gear before the measurement is taken. The contestant can achieve 50 points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches the rear cone, the contestant loses 25 points. The contestant loses 10 points if the vehicle touches the pivot cone. 5 points each for all other cones that are touched. 10 points each if the vehicle is shifted into reverse after initial shift into reverse, and 5 points for each 12-inch segment beyond the 36-inch limit from the rear cone. We now come to the left turn obstacle. This is a test of the contestant's ability to maneuver a 90-degree left turn. There are entrance cones on either side and cones on the outside of the lane. There is no pivot cone, therefore there is no measurement from the pivot cone. In judging this obstacle, the judge on the right side of the vehicle must record the vehicle hitting cones on the right side 
and the other judge observes the cones on the left side. The contestant can achieve 50 possible points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches an entrance cone, 25 points are deducted per cone. 10 points are deducted for each cone that is hit and 10 points each for shifting in reverse. If the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, the contestant loses 50 points. The next obstacle is diminishing clearance, which tests the contestant's ability to judge position and speed of the vehicle. A lane is built using five barrels or cones marked A, B, C, D, and E on each side, with the lane width diminishing between the entrance barrels and the exiting barrels. It's a good idea to spray paint around the outside of the barrel's base in case barrels are moved so that they can be replaced. In the case of Connecticut, a police officer with radar equipment was used to determine the speed of the vehicle. The contestant must enter the lane and maintain a minimum speed of 20 miles per hour as he or she drives the vehicle through the obstacle. Judges are positioned at the beginning of each side of the lane of barrels. They should not stand near the barrels just in case a barrel is hit. The contestant can achieve a total of 50 points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches A barrels, 25 points per barrel is deducted. B barrels, 16 points each. C barrels, 8 points each. D barrels, 4 points each. And E barrels, 2 points each are deducted. If the contestant does not maintain a minimum speed of 20 miles per hour, 25 points are deducted. The police officer will give a thumbs up if the 20 miles per hour is maintained so that the judge can score the attempt correctly. If the contestant does not complete the obstacle as designed, 50 points are deducted. The final obstacle is the judgment stop. This obstacle tests the contestant's ability to judge stopping distance between the bus and a small object, in this case a cone directly ahead. The contestant's goal is to be within six inches of the cone without touching it. There's one judge positioned at the finish line. The judge measures the distance between the vehicle's bumper and the top of the cone once the vehicle has been stopped. The contestant can achieve 50 possible points on this obstacle. If the vehicle touches the cone, 50 points are deducted. One point is deducted for each inch above six inches. All distances are rounded up to the next inch. If the contestant does another full stop after the initial stop, he or she loses 25 points per additional full stop. There are other non-obstacle course items that are scored by the judge that is on the bus, including personal appearance. The contestant can achieve 50 points on this item. Judges should deduct 10 points for each instance of poor professional appearance. Items judged include a wrinkled uniform, unkempt personal appearance, and unpolished or dirty shoes. If the judge rates the contestant less than 50 points, the judge inside the bus must explain on the score sheet why a lower score was given. Smoothness of operation and safety habits. The contestant can achieve 25 points in this category. Regarding smoothness of operations, the contestant loses one point for each time he or she makes a sudden stop, sudden start, or abrupt turn. For onboard safety habits, the contestant also loses five points for failure to use a seatbelt and two points for exhibiting poor posture, poor use of mirrors, hands, or feet. Time penalty. Timing begins when the vehicle's front bumper crosses the starting line and ends when the vehicle comes to a full stop at the last obstacle. The stopwatch should be paused when the vehicle stops for measurements at the right reverse, passenger stop, left reverse, or if the vehicle is held for any other reason along the course. A time penalty of one point per second above seven minutes will be assessed. The judge inside the vehicle rates the contestant on these items. Now you've observed a well-organized bus rodeo. We hope this video has helped you determine what you need to do in order to run your own successful transit rodeo. Make sure you utilize the additional resources made available by National RTAP in the Bus Rodeo Toolkit, available at the www.nationalrtap.org website.